My name's Ethan Hardy. I live out in the middle of nowhere in East Central Alberta, and I run a blacksmith shop called Hardy Locomotive Works, and we do industrial forging and all kinds of custom orders, and I work with steam engines. So let me tell you a little bit about this locomotive. It was made by Vulcan Iron Works in 1925. This locomotive is classified as an 040, which is the smallest steam locomotive you can get. It has four drive wheels that are coupled and no trailing trucks. It was designed like this for a short footprint and that short wheelbase allows you to get around tight curves. This locomotive was originally bought by the Big Bend Coal and Clay Company. It was numbered as number two and it worked at a variety of different places throughout the years. The last place that it worked in really revenue service was down in Florida at a power plant. And there's actually a video of it running that was captured back in 1959. It's on YouTube, you can go see that. And then it worked on a tourist railroad uh, up until the 1970s, mid 1970s. Uh, called the Civil War Junction and pulled a really fancy looking passenger car until it was bought by Bill Graham in 1977, moved up here to Alberta uh, with plans along with another locomotive uh, for some steam railroading up here. The cylinders have a bore of 13 inches and a stroke of 18 inches. The driver diameter is 36 inches and it had an original boiler operating pressure of 190 psi. It's a tank engine and specifically a saddle tank locomotive. That means a water tank sits up on top of the boiler, holds about 1,500 gallons or so. And so on water, this locomotive will last about 20 miles only. They weren't meant to go very long distances. Again, just in a yard or something like that. It was probably originally coal fired and it was converted to oil probably sometime in the 1950s and it ran that way up until it was retired in the 1970s. The fellow that really initially got me started and got my hands on a steam engine is the one that actually ended up selling me this locomotive. When I was about eight years old, our hometown was having a centennial 100 year celebration and, and Bill Graham brought out a threshing setup with a steam engine and threshing machines and he let me come and spend time with them for that week there and his right hand man named Dale. Ever since then, they've really become mentors of mine to one degree or another. Bill Graham is one of the most interesting characters you'll ever meet in your whole life. And he has done a number of things in his life, including run a big construction company, and, but he's a steam guy. When he was younger, probably around my age, he went down to the Caribbean because he wanted to run steam locomotives. He's been involved with lots of steam locomotive restorations over the years. So he's got uh, a wealth of knowledge and connections and a lot of respect in the this world too. The internet records for this locomotive say 1977 is when it changed ownership. Bill thought it was maybe slightly later like 1978 or something like that. I think it was in Florida or Louisiana and he trucked it up here. I think I saw this locomotive for the first time when I was nine years old. It was at a farm that was about 10 miles away and I had no idea that it was here. It's hidden behind a bush and there was an old train car that was beside it that it was hiding behind. I just thought it was the coolest thing. First time I'd ever got to crawl around a steam locomotive. Due to all the factors, I thought it would be a pipe dream. Like, I don't think that would ever happen. I took some inspiration. So I mentioned Barney Gramling. I think he was less than 20 years old when he bought his first steam locomotive with his dad. They were farmers. They're from Indiana. And they bought a locomotive really just like this. But they brought it home to their farm. And in their farm shop, they restored it. I also got a whole collection of photos of this locomotive when it was taken apart and put into storage. So how all the piping goes and how everything was hooked up originally all has photo evidence and it can basically be like a big puzzle to put together. One of the most important logistical considerations is the registration and certification process. Now that varies from place to place, but here in Alberta historically and up to date, we've had the strictest boiler codes in North America. So what that's gonna start out with is first of all, registering the design itself. This locomotive came from the United States originally. It was never run in Alberta back when it was in revenue service. And so the design is registered in the States, but it needs to be registered in Alberta. So first engineers have to check off on the design itself. Is the thickness of the steel plate and the rivet spacing and the stay spacing acceptable? The next thing that needs to be done is non-destructive testing. A portion of that has already been completed because I wanted to know the state of the boiler before I got it. So we did a pre-purchase ultrasonic test. And then there's hydro testing, which is where you fill the boiler completely with water and pressure it up. And if there is a fault, you're not gonna get an explosion because the water doesn't expand when you let out the pressure. And so it would just 
say, crack and spill a bunch of water everywhere. So they do a hydro test. And then at the end of all that, you would get a certificate that you're good for one year or five years. It depends on the jurisdiction. Not all of the advice that I was given by people was very good. In fact, one fellow told me that if I was interested in buying a steam locomotive to make sure that I wasn't married because it would probably wreck my marriage. That, however, does mean that you do have to talk to your wife about it. And my dear wife uh, not only was a good sport and is in with the project, but she was a very sober voice because this isn't just a for fun toy project. This has to be something where we provide value to other people through pulling tourist trains or teaching people how to run steam locomotives. So I think it was early in the springtime. And I texted Bill and I said, is the locomotive still available? How much do you want for it? I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna do it or anything. I just wanna see if it's still an option. And he let me know that it was. And so I sat down with Emily and um, she basically said, okay, uh, you know, this could work. Now, of course, you need to get the locomotive home. And this locomotive is a very small one. Within a few tons, it's the smallest locomotive that you could buy to run on standard gauge rail. But that's actually an advantage because it means that I could haul it on a standard low boy trailer. So when moving things, I usually make a reasonable time budget and then times by four. So in this case, it went even a little over because it was snowing and icy. There was problem after problem after problem. The railroad track that we had to adjust first of all fell off the loader, broke, and then we had no cutting torch to cut the length of the rail right. So we were cutting that and busting that. The yard was very tight. We had uh, multiple breakdowns. The big loader quit. The tractor to move the big loader quit. Uh, it got dark. The wheels were seized on, the brakes were seized on. We couldn't get the brakes off and really in the end, even though we got one set off, we didn't get both of them off and so the wheels had to slide up there. We had to grease the rails. But we had so much help that made it so easy. So many people that were willing to pitch in and help. Now you may ask Ethan, why do you have a steam locomotive? This is so crazy. What are you going to do with it? Is it not just like having another toy? What use is it? So let me tell you a little bit about what my plan is up my sleeve. So obviously I've been passionate about steam locomotives ever since I can remember. Lord willing, the plan is to restore to operational condition. And obviously I want to lay a little bit of track here at my property so we can test it out and such. But the plan is hopefully to take it to some local branch lines and tourist railroads such as the Battle River Railroad and pull some excursion trains. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this was an industrial locomotive. So it wasn't super pretty originally and kind of just looked like a little brick. And so there's some aesthetic things that I want to change on it too. This locomotive is, was built in 1925. And so in only a handful of days, it's going to be a hundred years old. But even then, locomotives that are a little bit older than this had some more aesthetically pleasing qualities that I kind of want to bring forward into this engine. Some of those attributes are going to be like a wood cab instead of a steel cab. And a wood cab that's set up a little bit higher on the boiler gives you a little bit more visibility, looks a little bit more balanced across the aesthetics. And some other things like a taller smokestack or a bigger kerosene headlight or things like that. Things that sound simple, but once we get into it, I know that they'll each be a project in and of themselves. Thanks for watching the video. If you've taken an interest in this, I hope you stick around and see the rest of the content that'll come from this, and I'll catch you on the next video.